So in this episode, I rescue a seagull that fell from the sky after the cyclone. We managed to catch a wild boar in one of our traps, which we then deliver to the island of Moda. And this is where we exchange the peak for some fresh, organic, tasty island produce. I was just doing some work on one of the bungalows and I saw this seagull just flying across here and then it just looked like he fell out of the sky and sh straight into the water and he's just laying there so I'm gonna quickly paddle out there and see how he's going I mean I've never seen one just land and sit there like that before that close in um, and we just had that cyclone um, sort of hit New Caledonia uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday and one of those birds actually landed up here and it was buggered and died about an hour later so maybe he's just buggered, maybe it's from that cyclone and he's been a long journey but yeah, we'll go see how he's going and there he is looks just buggered so I'm going to take him up put him in a box, let him recover um, I've had them land on the island before at night time and um, I was always unsure why and that like you could just go up and, and grab them even though they were still alive they wouldn't fly away and I'd put them in a box and, um, and, and leave, leave them in that box for one day overnight and then the next morning just open up the box and they'd fly away full of energy and away they go but if they're just left like this I mean they're at the risk of, of predators. A shark can just come and, and eat him and I think most likely he'd probably die anyway if, if you just left him, either of starvation or, or whatever. So I'm gonna pick him up and um, hopefully take care, of, take care of this poor seagull and hopefully tomorrow he can fly away and continue on with his life. Come on, buddy. Yeah, let's head to the island and get some rest. It's probably all it needs is a bit of rest. I mean, it was crazy. I was on the island and I was walking along doing some work on one of the bungalows, and I just saw saw this bird flying across here, and it just literally fell out of the sky. Like, didn't come and land on the water. Literally, just fell and went splat straight on straight onto the water here. And so I knew something was up. Not quite right. Unusual stuff, but happy to be part of the, the rescue. Um, so yeah, away we go, buddy. Let's go ashore. Right here, buddy. Looks absolutely buggered. Come on. Sorry, sorry. Let's let's go chill out. Right here, I'm just gonna let it rest in this box. Um, I might try and feed it some little bits of cut up fish in an hour or so, but just let it let it relax. Poor thing. A bit of a sad end to my rescue. Just died. I tried to give it some uh, fresh water. Couldn't really drink it, and it wasn't even an hour before it died. So I'm just putting it down to natural causes. It was its time, and. Um, I'm just going to put it back in the environment that it was going to die in anyway, back in the ocean and uh, some other animal can use it to continue their life. Now moving on to the next day where I catch so a pig. I've come up to check my other pig trap and there's a decent sized pig in there. So I'm just going to run and try and secure its back legs with this rope and then just tie it off and then uh, maybe come back with with Jason and one of the other boys to help me out but he's going nuts now so I've got to quickly because he could probably get out he's been in there got in there last night no shit so there he is I've secured him I've got his back leg and one of his front legs he's all secure now so he won't do any more damage to himself or, or won't be able to get out um, he was pretty close to getting out you can see he's like tr tried to jump over there smashed over there so I'll head back um, get Jason. Been back to home base, got Pierre and Jason to come help me out. 
Righty, I will secure it, so now I'm just going to tuck it in the back of the Jeep. Um, and yeah, we'll take it back and put it in the pen. He's in the Jeep, we'll take him back. He's just started to pour down with the rain, which will help pull him off and uh, let him relax. So I got a call last night saying um, there's been a death in the family on the island of Moda, which is over there. Um, so they want a pig, uh, which is what they use for their uh, custom ceremony, mourn the passing of a, of a family member. So I've just tied up the pig that we caught the other day uh, in the trap. So they're going to take him over to Moda Island now and deliver it to the family. So after jumping in the ocean for a quick dip to cool off, we push the boat down in the ocean, load her up with the pig. We all jump in along with the kids that came to visit their family on Quakea for a little bit to head back to Motor Island. It's about a 45 minute trip across in the banana boat. The village we're going to head to first is where we'll drop the pig off, where they're having the feast to mourn the loss. And there we'll head to the other village to say hello to the rest of the family and get our fresh produce. The water conditions are ideal with crystal clear viz and the odd shower passing through. Pigs in Vanuatu are a highly sought after animal. They hold great significance in custom ceremonies, as part of weddings, custom reconciliations, and as part of the many feasts had to mourn the loss of a loved one. After arriving to Motor Island and dropping the pig off at the first village, we are now walking up to the other village called Tasmate Village. Um, just another interesting thing for you guys that don't know, this tree here uh, is called Nutangura, produces just these leaves. It also produces a nut, but with those leaves, that's what, that's what we use for all the thatching for all our bungalows, is all from that, um, that one tree that we call Nutangura. Um, if you want to say it in Bishlama, Natangura. But um, yeah, they use it throughout all the islands for all their, all their roofing for the thatching. So yeah, there you go. These are, you know, those trees I showed you were the small ones. But that's how big they get. They have the big leaves on it. So yeah, I only just planted some on, on my island. So hopefully in a few years I'll be able to use my own leaves for my thatching. So uh, I used to have to get all my thatching from here. From the shoreline it's about a 20 minute trek up to the village. The initial part is quite steep and rocky so you do have to take care especially when it's been raining. Once arriving at the village saying hello and sharing our stories it was time to get our produce and head back down. Um, produce as well that I'm going to take back. The kids always enjoy swimming in these little rock pools and that's basically their shower for the day. Another interesting thing about Motor Island is how close the drop off is. From about 10 metres from the shoreline it drops off to about 200 metres and it just keeps getting deeper and deeper from there. There's not many sections around the island that has any beach, just all this sharp rock and the kids build up a tolerance and eventually can sprint along this rock which is quite amazing to watch. So we're just down at this puppy there with all our fruit and veg, all the kids having a swim. Just waiting for Jason, he's at the other village, he's got the boat. And uh, we'll bring it around and we'll load her up and we'll be on our way. As we're waiting for my boat to arrive, we can all hear my good mate Eddie arriving from the bush. I think he's had one too many carver shells with maybe a little something else in there. As he stumbles across all my fresh produce and probably wrecks a bit, but we'll forgive him. He's having a good time and he's in a happy mood. We load up all our produce and start to make our way back to Quakea. I've also got my little mate Pat Pat that's coming to spend some time with me on the island. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment, share and subscribe to help me along with my YouTube journey.